السلام عليكم عليكم السلام حياك الله يا دكتور ايمن آه واضحه الشير تمام تفضل تايم لك ان شاء الله آه اليوم ان شاء الله بنتكلم على الكلابسي او السنترال لاين اسوشيتد بلاد ستريم انفكشن يو نو انه ال ان اتش اس ان كومبوننتس في اكثر من كومبوننت وي هاف بيشنت سيفتي لونج تيرم كير فاسيلتي اوت بيشنت بيرسونال سيفتي بايو فيجيلنس السلام عليكم عليكم السلام حياك الله يا دكتور ايمن آه واضحه الشير تمام تفضل تايم لك ان شاء الله آه اليوم ان شاء الله بنتكلم على الكلابسي او السنترال لاين اسوشيتد بلاد ستريم انفكشن يو نو انه ال ان اتش اس ان كومبوننتس في اكثر من كومبوننت Uh, we have uh, patient safety, long-term care facility, outpatient, uh, personal safety, biovigilance, outpatient, neonatal, and all the surveillance, or most of the surveillance that we are giving you in this uh, course is uh, for the patient safety component. Uh, so the patient safety component is uh, composed of uh, Procedure associated, which is SSI only, device associated, including CLEPSI, VAE, CAUTI, and dialysis, and others, including MDRO. So, our focus in this lecture will be about CLEPSI. Uh, CLEPSI um, uh, has been a uh, yani, في فوكس على الكلابسي في last 10 years in the US and across the world uh, to reduce the level of clepsy. Uh, although uh, most of the countries uh, were able to reduce uh, the clepsy, but still it's a big problem. Uh, it can increase the length of stay by one week. It can increase the mortality by 15%. Uh, according to the US cost, Uh, one CLEPSI can can increase the cost of healthcare service by 48,000. Uh, and also, CLEPSI can have a lot of morbidity uh, for the patient, including uh, uh, since CLEPSI means in no fee bacteria for blood. This bacteria can stop at any place and make infection, like endocarditis in the heart, septic emboli, uh, can make a stroke. Metastatic infection anywhere in the body, uh, and and uh, again it can cause death and increase the mortality by 15%. So clepsy is very serious infection, and we are uh, keen to reduce uh, its impact in the healthcare system. Uh, if you look at this slide, uh, it show. Um, Second, uh, it show in this uh, uh, BSI in blue color. Uh, these are three different um, like studies done in US, Europe, and in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and as you see, uh, CLEPSI is not the most common one of uh, healthcare associated infection. In some studies, like Saudi Arabia, it is the number number three. And in most of the studies, it represents uh, 10% of all types of healthcare associated infection. But again, it is a serious infection. That's why we are interested to give you uh, the information about CLEPSI as the first uh, HAI. 
And uh, just a start about the incidents in ICUs in Saudi Arabia from the study that has been published uh, uh, by Ministry of Health. Uh, and as you see in adult ICU, uh, the number is 2.3. Uh, uh, this is like uh, uh, two years back data. Um, and this is uh, higher than NHSN. Uh, lower than the INIC, which is uh, developing countries, and more or less similar to the GCC countries, which include uh, the Gulf countries. Um, pediatric, more or less the same uh, as adult. Uh, maybe the numbers is a little bit uh, higher, uh, neonatal also higher, uh, but this is uh, the message of this slide that our rate is still higher than NHSN rate, but better than developing countries rate. Uh, there is something called central line utilization. Central line utilization uh, means uh, the percentage of days, the percentage of days that patients are on central line. Now, uh, if ICU, for example, uh, and then, uh, uh, 10 uh, beds, عليهم 10 patients. عاوزين نعرف كم واحد على central line. ففرضنا انه في 5 على central line و5 not on central line. يبقى 5 على 10 الرقم كلي يعطيك 0.5% او 50%. ف uh, ال number of central line utilization in Saudi Arabia is 43. What does it mean 43%? Uh, percent? It means 43% of the days in ICU, our patients have central line. Uh, it is very close to the NHSN. Um, Dr. Arwa is requesting to annotate. So, yes, approve or decline? I don't know. Uh, decline, Dr. Decline. Okay, sorry. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, it is very close to the NHSN, so we are okay with this. Uh, so back to the CLEPSI definition. So what does it mean, CLEPSI? CLEPSI means bloodstream infection in a patient who has central line. So how we can uh, define this? So CLEPSI is a primary bloodstream infection and underscore the word primary, primary bloodstream infection means there is secondary. When you, they say primary, means there is secondary. So we are interested in primary bloodstream infection, which is a lab confirmed uh, positive blood, uh, blood culture or positivity by other means, and not secondary to another infection to uh, in other parts of the body. For example, uh, if I have somebody have the UTI, and after a few days he got bloodstream infection, we would consider this as secondary if the same organism was detected from the urine and the blood. So we, we are interested in CLEPSI in primary. Primary means there is no other infection causing this uh, bloodstream infection. And the patient has a central line. Even the central line has been removed on the day of the event or the day before. It's still considered as having central line. So, uh, um, in, uh, if the patient has central line and has primary bloodstream infection, is CLEPSI. Uh, according to uh, the uh, publication uh, of, uh, of NHSN about the organism causing CLEPSI, as you see in ICU, uh, the first one is coagulase negative. The, uh, the second one is uh, candida. The third one is a staph. And if you look at uh, uh, coagulase negative, it's on the skin, the most common one. It's in the skin. So uh, skin commensal means organism that is present normally on the skin does not cause harm. But when they enter uh, the, the uh, central line, they can introduce it into the blood and causing uh, bacteremia or epilepsy. Uh, what is the date of event? Yani when I can say CLEPSI happened? Uh, 
uh, it is the date of the first element used to meet the criteria. So if I have criteria for CLABSI, we will discuss with you the criteria later. The first element used in this criteria within the window, seven day window, will be considered the date of the So if the criteria is only both the blood culture, so the, the date of, of drawing blood, not getting the result from the lab, drawing the blood, will be the date of event. If the definition includes symptoms, like hypotension, for example, the date hypotension happened within the window would be the date of event. Uh, and when we say central line, some people does not know what does it mean central line. Central line is intravenous catheter that terminate at or close to the heart or one of the big vessels uh, uh, of the heart. Uh, used for what? Used for infusion. With infusion mean uh, infusing fluids. Withdrawal, taking fluids or blood. Or hemodynamic monitoring uh, uh, for monitoring the hemodynamic situation of the patient. So uh, as you see, it has to be a catheter terminate to the heart or uh, large vessels and used for infusion, withdrawal, or hemodynamic uh, monitoring. And this is the arteries, uh, uh, the blood vessels that are considered uh, large blood vessels aorta, pulmonary artery, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, brachiocephalic, and so on, internal jugular, subclavian, external area. And out of these, these are very deep in the heart, in the, in the body. We cannot reach the aorta or pulmonary artery or something like that. It's not easy. Uh, so usually, we place the, the central line in internal jugular or subclavian and sometimes external iliac. We would like you to insert it in subclavian. If not, and this is uh, contraindicated, put it in internal jugular. Uh, but we do not recommend using external iliac, lane, external iliac, good for thigh, gambel uh, groin. والمنطقة دي مليانة بكتيريا فاحنا نحب الأدلس does not use uh, this area for inserting the central line uh, so to avoid infection because this is the groin area has a lot of colonization but this uh, internal jugular subclavian موجودين uh, in the neck uh, in the neck and the base of the neck so we would like the subclavian to be our first choice and as I, I told you, this is the internal jugular subclavian, internal jugular to the neck, and subclavian at the base of the neck here, going to the arm, uh, uh, external iliac and the thigh, and we would we do not recommend this area because of the colonization, but this area can be more clean. That's why we we uh, like the subclavian. Uh, we have ty different types of central line, and all are included in the. Uh, Clapsy surveillance. The first one is temporary or non-tunnel, where the central line is entered directly in the blood vessels. Permanent, which is stayed uh, kept uh, kept in the uh, in the body for longer time, maybe weeks uh, or more, uh, and this is implanted. And we'll tell you how. Uh, what does it mean implanted? Uh, um, or tunneled. Uh, the the third one is um, uh, umbilical catheter, and this is only in the neonates used in the umbilical artery. For neonates, which uh, the baby is recently born, is still the umbilical artery working, so we can use it for central line. Um, so we have non tunneled and tunneled. This is the big. Uh, uh, big uh, categories. Uh, non tunneled, uh, another name for the temporary, tunneled uh, for the permanent. And the, uh, the good uh, example of this is Hickman, Roviac. Uh, these are uh, types of catheter used for tunneled catheter. Uh, in blanket board, we don't use this uh, so much, maybe very little here or not present, because it's associated with infection. Uh, preferably inserted central line, uh, central catheter or big line is also one of the central line allowed for clepsy, and we'll show you this. Uh, 
so uh, this is an example of the uh, uh, non tunneled or uh, temporary catheter. You enter the catheter here to to enter directly into into the subclavian to the heart. So this is directly enter from the skin to the, the blood vessels. But the other one, which is tunnel, it is entered here, travel under the skin in a tunnel. That's why it's called tunneled. And then enter the blood vessels to the heart, uh, subclavian to the heart, like Roviak or Hickman. Uh, the uh, big line, uh, big line is entered here in the uh, brachiocephalic uh, or basalic into basalic brachial uh, or cephalic uh, in the arm, then uh, introduced into the blood vessels until it reaches into the heart. Since it is uh, in, inserted uh, in the um, uh, in the arm, um, so it is called peripherally inserted. It's not centrally inserted, peripherally inserted central line. Uh, and this is called big line. And in the big line, uh, it is uh, one of the central line. As I said, the implanted board here, they put a board under the skin, uh, travel like the tunnel uh, catheter, and enter the heart, uh, the blood vessels in the heart, but it is associated with infection, so not used. Uh, uh, now, uh, we have some devices not uh, considered central line, and these are, uh, if the device is not used for infusion, withdrawal, or hemodynamic monitoring, we will not consider this as central line. Uh, wires uh, are not considered central line. Pacemaker are not considered uh, central line, and so on. So, uh, is, is not any device uh, entered into the body. Uh, it, it has to be has a lumen. يعني the catheter لها تجويف. وبيدخل فيه blood أو fluid بيخرج منه blood. Use it for this purpose. Uh, that's why it is considered central line. Uh, these are the names of uh, devices that come in contact with the blood but are not considered central line. Arteriovenous fistula and graft, these are used in the definition of dialysis events. Uh, arterial catheter, uh, unless pulmonary or aortic or umbilical artery, uh, usually arterial catheter are not used as central line. Uh, atrial catheter, uh, extracorporeal life support ECMO, although ECMO, the blood go outside the body, uh, filtrated, then go back to the, uh, to the body. Uh, come in contact with the blood, but if the infection happened, will not consider this clepsy because extracorporeal life support is not uh, a central line. Again, hemodialysis, reliable outflow is not. These are devices, you may not know all of them, but they are not uh, considered central line, although they are inserted into the blood or come in contact with the blood, uh, but we are not considering this as central. So central line, as I gave you the photos before, uh, the tunnel, the non-tunnel, and big line, or big catheter. Uh, if the patient has more than one central line, can the patient have more than one central line? Yes. How? Sometimes uh, the patient has a temporary central line and permanent on the same time. So if this is the case, uh, should we consider this as two, uh, if we counting the days of central line? So can we count these two days? It is the same patient, but has two catheter, one, one temporary and one permanent. Uh, no, we consider it one day only, and we use the more risky. The more risky is the temporary. Uh, temporary is associated with more infection than permanent. Uh, that's why we count the more risky. So if, if the patient has temporary and permanent catheter, both catheter, please uh, consider this as temporary and consider this as one day of central line. Uh, central line inclusion and exclusion. Um, when the central line is inserted, we will consider this as day one for central line days. Removed, 
is it the last day of uh, central nine days uh, if the if the patient Uh, if the patient uh, has the central line placed on admission, like he's admitted to the ER, then they inserted the central line. So the day of admission will be the day of central line placement. Uh, uh, how, sometimes the patient is transferred from another hospital and has already a central line inserted. In this case, if, if we access the central line, means we... Uh, use uh, use it in insertion and withdrawal and hemodynamic monitoring. We will consider the day of admission, the first day of central line uh, counting. يعني يعني لو the patient came to the hospital without central line, we insert it in the ER or any other unit. We will consider the day of admission, the first day of counting central line days. Right. If the patient come with the central line already inserted from another hospital. We will start the counting once we start using the line. If we use the line on the same day of admission, start from day one. If we use the line after three days, consider the day after three days is the first day of insertion of the first line, uh, of the central line. Uh, by deaccessing, so you still have the line, but you don't use it anymore. Can we exclude it from the surveillance? No. Uh, once you have the line, even if you don't use it after you use it, yeah. Once you have the line, you use it after this. If even if you don't use it, still the line there, you will count it as uh, central line days. It cannot be removed from the surveillance unless you remove the line. You remove the line from the patient. Uh, this is an example of accessing yani a patient who have central line inserted in another hospital. You inject uh, uh, the cab or you using a searing to make sure it is a clear line, flush uh, the catheter. Uh, all these are considered accessing. So once you access, we will consider this the day of insertion. Um, if I, if I remove the central line for any reason, then reinsert, can we consider this two central line or one central line? Yani, a patient has a problem in the central line, so we remove it and then reinsert another one on the same day or the day after. So should we consider this two central lines? Should we stop counting central lines, uh, uh between the removal and, and, and reinsertion. So the rule here, if you remove and then insert or replace central line, on the same day of removal or the next day, continue counting. So for example, if you remove in day five and insert in April 2nd and insert in April three uh, or third, uh, you continue counting, so uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. But if you uh, remove an April 2nd and replace it in April 4, here we have one calendar day without catheter. Now, since we have one calendar day without catheter, we will start over. Start over means we will consider this one central line, and this is another central line you start from one, so day one, two, three, and so on. So how we do the central line surveillance? Uh, this is slide, you will see it repeated in, in CLAPSI, in CAUT, in VAE, in all types of surveillance that we do. We do active, patient-based, prospective, priority-directed, yield-adjusted, uh, rates or risk adjusted incidence rates. So what does it mean methodology? It means how you do the surveillance. What is your methods for surveillance? Like what, what does it mean active? Active means you are actively looking for patient with central line for the symptoms, for the lab result to find out if they get positive blood culture. 
so the, or get some symptoms. Uh, so this is called active. You actively looking for information. This is opposite to passive. Passive means you are sitting in your room. If somebody call you and said, we have a patient with positive blood culture, you recorded. Patient, nobody call, no recording. No, we don't want the passive surveillance. We don't, we want active surveillance. You have to look at your uh, uh, information about your patients uh, in the unit of surveillance. Patient-based means it's not lab-based. Patient-based means that you are looking for lab information as well as the symptoms of the patient. Prospective. Prospective means you start the surveillance uh, when the patient is still in the hospital. So you don't wait until the patient discharged, then you look for the information. Priority directed means you don't do the all uh, surveillance in all units. You only choose some units. Uh, some units means, say, an entire hospital has 50 units. We don't have a staff to run uh, collapse surveillance in all the 50 units. So we have to choose two or three only. So how we choose this two or three priority directive means according to the priority, according to the rate of infection, according to the complaint, according to um, the staff I have, according to the time I have. Uh, so uh, it's called bio priority directive. Yield risk adjusted incidence rate. The incidence rate has to be counted and calculated per 1,000 central line days. So we don't calculate the rate of collapse per 100 patient, or well, per 1,000 patient. No, per 1,000 patient days. And this is called adjusting the rate for time. Any yani adjusting the rate for time. Uh, in collapse, we differentiate between patient who has been in ICU for two days, a patient who has been in the ICU for 10 days. If the patient has been for two days, the maqam will be two. Because in the ICU two days, the maqam will be two. If the patient is for 10 days, the maqam will be 10. So we have to make adjustment to the duration. The more the patient is stay in the unit, the more risk of infection. So we want to adjust for that stay. لو عملناها بير 1000 patient ولا 100 patient كده يتساوى اللي قاعد في ال unit two days و ten days. These are the principles of HAI definition, and it all applies. في الكلابسي except the BSI secondary BSI uh, and we will go through them one by one. Uh, so the window is seven days, seven days. The middle of the window is يتم تحديد middle of the window first. The middle of the window is the positive blood culture. So once you have positive blood culture, count three days before and three days after this is your window. And if symptoms are needed, symptoms has to happen within the window. Date of event is the first element, the date of the first element used in the definition. Present on admission, if positive blood culture happened in the first two days of admission, we will not count this in our surveillance. It is present on admission. This is إلا لو البوست بلاك كلتشر هابن on the third day or after third day, fourth day, fifth day of admission um, 14 days repeat infection time frame if I diagnose collapse I, can, I cannot diagnose another collapse unless 14 days pass from the date of the event of the first one حتى لو في عندي بوزيتيف بلاك كلتشر حتى لو في بوزيتيف بلاك كلتشر ثاني ما بحسبه طب حتى لو البوزيتيف بلاك كلتشر ده انذر باثوجين يعني الاولاني كان كليبسيلا والثاني اسينيتوباكتر بعده باسبوع بوزيتيف بلاك كلتشر 
Should I consider this another clepsy? No. Even if you have another organism after one week, as long as it is within the 14 days after the first uh, event, you cannot diagnose another clepsy. Central line removal and reinsertion, we, we just said, uh, if it is removed and reinserted on the same day, sorry, reinserted on the same day of removal or the day after you continue counting. If, it, if one day calendar day pass without catheter, you should start over new counting. Pathogen assignment guidance. For example, he has Klebsiella, positive blood culture. After one week, he has another a positive blood culture, Acinetobacter. Uh, we said you don't count another Klebsi. However, Acinetobacter, you can place it. It's called pathogen assignment. يعني تحط الاسنيتوباكتر مع الكلابسيلا في نفس الفورم بتاع الفيرست كلابسي. كالشر ونان كالشر وي ويل جو تو ذيس ليتر. مالتيبل ترانسفير اي اي جيس وي ويل جو تو ذيس ليتر. وير وي دو سيرفيلانس وي دو ات ان اني لوكيشن ان ذا هوسبيتال ذات از ان بيشنت سواء كانت اي سي يو فور ادلتس ICU for pediatric, ICU for neonatal, specialty care area like hematology, oncology, transplant, and other inpatient locations which are ward. So can we do collapse in ward? Yes. In oncology? Yes. ICU pediatric? Yes. ICU neonatal? Yes. ICU adult? Yes. Can we do it in dialysis outpatient? No. Like, uh, is a no for dialysis outpatient? طيب dialysis in patient يعني في بعض البيشنتس بيجي لهم acute renal failure أثناء ال ال admission بيعملوا لهم dialysis داخل المستشفى fine you can include them in clemency طيب dialysis اللي هو في center outside the hospital it's called outpatient clinic can we include no ليه لأنه this type of dialysis is covered by another surveillance called dialysis events and included in bacteremia, not in clepsy. If a, if a clepsy event diagnosed for adult ICU, you count it for adult ICU. For a ward, for a ward. What if the uh, clepsy diagnosed in ER, or outpatient, or OR, uh, since these locations are outpatient in nature, we do not do epilepsy in outpatient. So you have to refer it to the next location that is inpatient. Bimana. Lao patient uh good fill ER wasalu clepsy. Uh should we consider we bad in ER Amalulu admission to ICU? Should we consider this? Clepsy uh, in ER or the ICU. Although it happened in ER, but ER is outpatient. We don't do clepsy surveillance in outpatient. We have to count it on the first inpatient location after the outpatient, which is the ICU. So this clepsy will be considered uh, or attributed uh, to the ICU. Uh, transfer rule. Transfer rule. If the patient uh, is recently transferred to a unit, يعني the patient, مثلاً, حالته تحسنت شوية, فتنقل من the ICU to the ward. بس بعد ما تنقل في the ward, أول يوم حصل كلابسي. طيب. Consider this كلابسي على the ward ولا على the ICU. إذا حدثت في the first day of transfer أو the next day for the transfer. Count it on the first site, the lower ICU. طب لو حصلت on the third day of transfer, or after, consider it for the new site. For example, somebody was in ER, and تحول على ICU, فضل في the pediatric ICU for two days. هنا في the second في the second day of transfer. 
قالوا كلابس طيب نكونسيدر ذس على البي اي سي يو ولا الاي ار لو الاي ار دي مش اوت بيشنت هقول لك احسبها على الاول لانه حدثت ثاني يوم من الترانسفير الترانسفير حصل ماي 24 والكلابسي حصلت ماي 25 فلو لو الاي ار ديت وورد هقول لك احسبها على الوورد ولكن الاي ار از اوت بيشنت ما اقدر احسب عليها كلابسي سو so, uh, I have to count it on the uh, ICU uh, in this case طيب من ال uh, so this is uh, ICU من ال ICU راح ال ward ثاني يوم حصل كلابسي نحسبها على ال ICU ولا ال ward since it happened on the next day of transfer it will be considered uh, for the first location which is the uh, The first location uh, of transfer, which is the ICU. Okay, from the ICU, the ward. For the ward, the day of the third day, the third collapse. Should we count it for the ward or the first location of ICU? Since the collapse is diagnosed after two days of transfer, considering the day of transfer is day one, then I will count it on the current location which is the world. طيب من الورد حالة تحسنت الشارجد راح الهوم uh, كلابسي is diagnosed uh, في بعض الناس عندهم هوم كير فعملوا له سحب عينة وطلعت بوزيتيف طيب نكونسيدر ذس كلابسي ولا في الهوم ولا كلابسي في الورد ما في كلابسي تتحسب على الو... على الهوم الكلابسي إذا حصلت بعد ال ال, ال... The charge uh, on the same day of the charge or the next day will be considered for the last location or the charging location, which is the world. Type multiple transfer. في بعض الأحيان البيشن يتحرك داخل المستشفى أو يتنقل داخل المستشفى أكثر من مرة. يعني يكون في الاي سي يو ويروح لورد 3 بعدين تو ورد 3 ويودو ورد 4. A word seven, a word seven, you would do word ten. So he moved on the same day more than one location. And if if collapse happened, you go to the previous day, first location, and attributed to the first location the day before diagnosis. So here, the first location on the day day before the diagnosis May twenty six, the day before diagnosis May twenty five, the first location would be. Word three, so I will count this collapse on word three, which is the first location on the day before diagnosis. There are few multiple locations. Nerga le definition beta the collapse. Abli ma nibda definition. Ayi hada ande soal. Elifat. اي طب اي حد عنده ريكومنديشن اي شيء اهلا دكتور ايمن يو كان كونتينيو دكتور فور ذا ديفينيشن اوكي تمام فور ذا ديفينيشن عندنا ثلاثة كرايتيريا كرايتيريا 1 2 3 كرايتيريا 1 بنسميها ال بي سي اي 1 ال بي سي اي 2 ال بي سي اي 3 كرايتيريا 1 هنا البيشنت اني ايج ادلت بيدياتريك نيونيت وي هاف بوزيتيف بلاك كالشر ذات هاز ا ريكوجنايزد بكتيريا اور فانجاي اند This is from one or more blood specimen. One is enough. So, um, and the organism is not related to infection at another place. Okay, recognized pathogen, uh, pathogen uh, that is um, not commensal. Okay, we will give you the commensal. 
سو هنا الشخص اي ايج عنده بوزيتيف بلاك كلتشر او نان كلتشر ميثود يعني عنده بوزيتيف بكتيريا في البلاد بكتيريا او فنجاي بس ما هي كومنسل في الحاله دي ما محتاج سيمتومز يعني ايفن ويزاوت سيمتومز اف ذا بيشنت از بوزيتيف فور بكتيريا اور فنجاي ان ذا بلاد اند ذا اورجانيزم از نوت كومنسل خلاص دي كونسيدر كلابسي ايفن ويزاوت سيمتومز الكرايتيريا رقم اثنين هي مشابهة لرقم واحد ولكن الفرق انه البكتيريا كومنسلز في الحالة ديت احنا كنا قايلين هنا كلشر اور نون كلشر ميثود لو كومنسل ما في حل غير كلشر اونلي وي ات هاز تو بي فروم تو اور مور بلاد سبيسمن ذا فيرست وان واز وان اور مور هير تو اور مور The first one, culture or non-culture. Here, a culture only. The first one, recognize the pathogen. Here, commensal. The talama commensal. يعني commensal يا جماعة. يعني the organism من the skin organism. طيب. ليش ليش لما هو لما بقى skin organism عاوز two specimen مش واحدة. لأنه بنخاف يكون contamination. يعني ساعات يكون السبيسمن نفسها كونتامينيتد من السكن وهو بيسحب السبيسمن كونتامينيت السيرنج من السكن فيطلع لك البلاد بوزيتيف وفي الحقيقه مش بوزيتيف هو كونتامينيشن من السكن فقال لك انه لازم يكون في تو سبيسمن يكون الاثنين بوزيتيف بنفس الاورجانيزم عشان اتاكد انه فعلا ما هي كونتامينيشن واضافه لكده قال لك لازم يكون في signs and symptoms حتى consider الكرايتيريا ديت uh, second criteria يبقى second criteria تختلف عن the first criteria ان الorganism commensal I have to have two or more specimen positive with the same pathogen I have to have symptoms this include in adult fever, chills or hypotension one of the three symptoms not all of them And of course, this positive blood culture is not related to infection in another place and having the symptoms having within the window. Criteria three is exactly criteria two. يعني if you look, criteria three is exactly criteria uh, two. The only difference in the age is not any age, only in infants, the first year of life. والسيمتومز اتعدلت شويه عشان تناسب الكيدز او الـ او البيبي في الادلتس لما بيكون عنده انفكشن خلي بالكم الكلابسي معناها تسمم بالدم انتانات الدم او تسمم بالدم فبيكون الشخص عنده هاي بوتنشن الضغط بتاعه بيبقى واطي جدا آه عنده شيفرنج ودرجه الحراره عاليه طيب في البيبيز في الفيرست يير اوف لايف البكتيريميا في بعض الاحيان يكون فيها فيفر بعض الاحيان يكون فيها هايبوثيرميا يعني التمبرتشر تزيد او التمبرتشر تقل ما في شيفرنج آه وما في آه هايبوتنشن لا في تاثير على الهارت واللنج انه الهارت ريت يقل براديكارديا والريسبيراتوري ريت يقل او يتوقف بعض الاحيان ويرجع تاني اسمه ابنيا ففي البيبي تعامل البيبي مع الانفكشن مختلف مع الادلت لان الاميون سيستم تبعه لسه ما هو مكتمل فبيكون عنده يا فيفر عالي يا فيفر يا يا حراره عالي يا حراره قليل وابنيا وبراديكارديا واحده منهم يعني يبقى الثيرد كرايتيريا مختلفة عن السكند كرايتيريا انها تحدث اونلي في الانفانتس الساينز اند سيمتومز مختلفة فيها ابنيا امبراديكارديا هايبوثيرميا فيفر في الاثنين ماشي والكومنسال هو كومنسال ما في مشكلة كالشر تو اور مور سبيسمنت طيب شوية معلومات على الكرايتيريا الثلاثة كرايتيريا وين وي سي كرايتيريا تو اور ثري لما يقول لك تو اور مور سبيسمين معناها تو اور مور ماتشنج باثوجين فروم 
sorry, matching pathogen from two or more um, specimens. بمعنى إنه الباثوجين اللي موجود في السبيسمن رقم واحد هو نفس الباثوجين اللي موجود في السبيسمن رقم اثنين في الحالة دي I will exclude contamination will consider it CLAPSI criteria two. طيب في الكلابسي all positive blood لما بتيجي تسحب العينة من أي مكان ما لازم تكون العينة متخدة من السنترال لاين يعني في الدياجنوزز بتاع الكلابسي صحيح احنا قلنا الكلابسي دياجنوز كانت هابن unless the patient have central line بس العينة تاخدها من اي مكان فممكن واحد يسأل why يعني انت ليه تقول انه الكلابسي لازم يكون فيه central line وفي العينة تقول ماشي okay, حتى لو واخد البلاد من peripheral uh, vein fine لانه البلاد uh, is circulating في, في البادي uh, like 60 times per minute يعني البلاد اللي موجود في الفين رايت ناو كان في الهارت من سكند واحده فاهم قصدي؟ فهو البلاد بيتحرك في الجسم باستمرار فبلاد في اني لوكيشن ويل هاف ذا بكتيريا لو الشخص عنده آه آه كلابسي طب لو الشخص كان بي دايجنوزد كلابسي على كرايتيريا 1 و2 احسب 1 2 و3 احسب 2 ف بتاخذ الاعلى الاعلى مينز اللي هو الرقم الاقل يعني الاعلى مينز اللي هو السترونجر كل ما يبقى الاورجانيزم باثوجينيك اورجانيزم ريكوجنايز ريكوجنايز باثوجين نوت كومنسال يبقى اقوى في الديفينيشن لذلك لو الواحد عنده لو الـ لو البيشنت عنده ريكوجنايز باثوجين وفي نفس الوقت عنده كومنسال شود وي كونسيدر ذيس كرايتيريا 1 ولا 2 هو اولا ميتنج كرايتيريا 1 وميتنج كرايتيريا 2 بس لما نيجي نريكورد Record the criteria one as long as he has recognized the pathogen. Report or record criteria one. حتى لو معه criteria two. كمان لو عنده criteria two و criteria three, record the criteria two. طيب في ال في في criteria two و three قلنا يكون في two matching specimen. طيب افرض ان السبيسمن الاولى مسموح تكون السبيسمن بينهم فيو مينتس او حتى في النكست داي يعني لما اقول تو اور مور سبيسمن بوزيتيف فور ذا سيم باثوجين السكند سبيسمن دي ممكن تكون بعد الفيرست سبيسمن بفيو مينتس 1 اور ان ذا سيم داي اور ايفن ذا نكست داي فاين طيب اف اف ات از ان ذا نكست داي بحسب الديت اوف اوف كلابسي الداي بتاع الفيرست سبيسمن ولا السكند سبيسمن بناخد الفيرست يعني لو عندك تو سبيسمن والاثنين كومنسال ستريبت ابيدرمس دي نفس الاورجانيزم داي 1 وداي 2 يبقى الكلابسي تحصل في داي 1 الديت اوف ايفنت هيبقى الداي اوف ذا فيرست سبيسمن طيب في الديفينيشن بتاع كرايتيريا 1 قلنا كلشر او نان كلشر لكن كرايتيريا 2 و 3 قلنا اونلي كلشر الكلشر هو الطريقه المعتاده لديتكشن اوف بوزيتيف بكتيريا او فنجاي في البلاد ياخدوا البلاد ويزرعوه على ميديا ينمو البكتيريا على الميديا وبعد شويه ياخدوا عينه من البليت اللي عليه البكتيريا والبلاد ويشوفوا هل في اورجانيزم ولا لا لو في اورجانيزم يقول لك بوزيتيف بلاك كلشر ما في يقول لك نيجاتيف بلاك كلشر طيب دي هي الكلاسيك ميثود اللي موجوده في معظم الهوسبيتال بعض الهوسبيتال نوت اول ذا هوسبيتال هاف نان كلشر ميثود يعني ايه نان كلشر ميثود تكنولوجي ميثودز عنده بي سي ار عنده انتيجين تيستينج عنده اميونو هيستو كيمستري ميثود بعض التستات الإلكترونية أو البايو تكنولوجي بتقدر تقول لك إنه في بكتيريا في البلاد تقدر تقول لك إن في أسينيتو باكتر في البلاد تقدر تقول لك إن في كليبسيلا في البلاد والله فاين وي كان يوز إت لو الكلشر مش موجود لكن لو الكلشر موجود وي هاف تو يوز ذا كلشر يعني هذه يستعاض عنها في حالة إن كلش ما في كلشر وتكون أونلي كرايتيريا 1 يعني يكون أونلي على البكتيريا اللي هي 
ريكوجنايز ذا باثوجين ما في نون كالشر تيست لكومنسل كواجيليز نيجاتيف ستاف ستريبت ابيديرميدز ده uh, 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 ما في لها نون كالشر مثلا فالنون كالشر تستات في الباي تكنولوجي تستات الحديثه مش موجوده في كل الهوسبيتال معظم الهوسبيتال ما فيها عندنا يعني بس لو موجوده وعاوز تستخدمها بدل الكالشر فاين لو ما في كالشر امتى نستخدمها لما يكون الثلاثه دول او الاربعه كونديشنز دول انا هذا ف you identify the organism directly from the blood not from the media when the blood is not collected for the purpose of culture within two days before or one day after يعني ما في كلشر في اليومين اللي قبل واليوم اللي بعد التست لو طب لو في ما نحسبها ما نستخدم النان كلشر قلنا النان كلشر اونلي لو ما في كلشر لو ما في كلشر نستعيد عنه لكن موجود الكلشر ما نستطيع خلاص نستخدم الكلشر يبقى لازم يكون البلاد دايركتلي ويدرون فروم ذا بودي ويكون ما في كلشر ميثود يوزد ان ذا تو دايز بيفور اند داي افتر اند ذا اورجانيزم از ايدنتيفايد تو ذا جينس اور ذا جينس اند سبيشيز ليفل وي ميت كرايتيريا 1 اونلي نو كرايتيريا 2 اور 3 بيكوز وي سيد ذات كرايتيريا 2 اند 3 دوز نوت الاو ان نان كلشر ميثود Um, طيب if I have culture and non-culture use culture uh, when you uh, collect the specimen the blood some uh, guidelines for this ideally the blood should be obtained from two or four uh, blood draws يعني هما بيعملوا ايه يا جماعة بياخدوا السبسمن بيسحب الدم و و و انسرتد في تو تيوبس واحده هتبقى للايروب واحده للنان ايروب يعني هيعمل آه الكالشر بطريقتين ايروب ونان ايروب فعشان كده هو بياخد بلاد درو ويحطه في تو تيوبس طيب احنا عاوزين تو بلاد درو يعني فور تيوبس ده ايديالي ولكن في البيدياتريك نتيجة ان البيدياتريك والنيونيتس حجم الصغير يعني طفل بسيط يعني بنقول كفاية تاخد درو واحد على اساس انه بريشس بلاد يعني فا اونلي بلاد درو 1 از اكسبتد طبعا اكيد تتشخص ان هو كرايتيريا 1 فا طيب التو بلاد درو هنحسبهم تو بلاد درو ازاي؟ يكون رايت ليفت يكون فرو تو تو ليومن كاثيتر من وان ليومن ان انذر ليومن طيب ايه الفتره اللي ما بين الاثنين يعني امتى احسب ان دي بلاد رو وده سكند بلاد رو قد ايه الفتره بينهم بس مجرد انك تروح الناحيه الثانيه الرايت او الليفت وتعمل كليننج وتسحب البلاد ويل كونسيدر ذس از ا سكند بلاد ممكن يحصل الكلام ده ويذن مينتس ممكن يحصل ويذن اورز ايفن ذا نيكست داي فاين آه، طيب قلنا كلمة كومينسل أكتر من مرة في الليكشر ديت أو السكين كومينسل هم إيه السكين كومينسل؟ أشهر واحدة اللي هي الكواجيليز نيجاتيف ستاف باي فار ذيس إز ذا موست كومن ميت وان بس في كمان آه، حاجات أخرى زي الديفترويد باسيلس روبيونو بكتيريم آه، ستريبت فيريدانس إيروكوكاس مايكروكوكاس أنرودوكوكاس آه، الكواجليز نيجاتيف ستاف از كولد اولسو ستاف ابيديرمز فانت لو شفت كلمه ستاف ابيديرمز او كواجليز نيجاتيف ستاف الاثنين هم نفس المعنى ومعلومه عاوز اقولها الكواجليز نيجاتيف ستاف ما هي الستاف اوريوس الستاف اوريوس ريكوجنايزد باثوجين الكواجليز نيجاتيف ستاف ده نوع من الستاف بيبقى موجود على السكن وده كومنسل فالكواجليز نيجاتيف is the skin commensal coagulase negative staph or CNS is coagulase negative staph is the skin commensal uh, but staph aureus is a recognized pathogen <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
we just said this انك تاخدها من tool human catheter من right and left من uh, من blood catheter و و و preferred blood draw uh, قلت انا من شويه انه اي blood تقدر تاخده من البيشنت is okay for uh, collapse C surveillance يعني ما هو لازم يكون من الكاثيتر نفسها لانه في بعض الناس معتقده ان يو هاف تو ويذرو البلاد من السنترال لاين لا ما هو لازم لما تقول ماتشنج باثوجين يعني معناها انه uh, لو الجينس والسبيشيز موجودين لازم يكونوا ذا سيم لكن لو واحده جينس والثانيه جينس اند سبيشيز لو الجينس سيم فاين طيب جيف مي اكزامبل بليز لانه ده ممكن يكون شويه ديفيكالت تو اندرستاند الاكزامبلز هير لو انا عندي باسيلس سيريس اند باسيلس يعني الاولانيه كانت باسيلس سبيشيز ما في ما في جينس سوري ما في سبيشيز ات از جينس اونلي باسيلس or bacillus cirrus genus و species يعني دي اسم العيلة ودي اسم الشخص والعيلة لو اسم ال... لو اسم العيلة فقط متساوي اللي هو البسيلس one of them only genus name and the other is genus and species it is fine يبقى دول عند same طيب uh... طيب لو دي باسيلس انذر تايب اوف باسيلس اي يعني سي مثلا ده باسيلس سيريس وده باسيلس انثروسس هل ينفع نقول عليهم ذا سيم؟ نو ليه؟ لانه بما انه ذكر السبيشيز في الاثنين يبقى لازم السبيشيز في الاثنين تكون سيميلر طيب كواجيليز نيجاتيف وستاف ايبيدرمس انا قلت لك ان الاثنين نفس النيم مع نفس الاورجانيزم مع انه نيم مختلف بس بتوع الميكروبيولوجي هم اللي عملوا كده هم اللي خلوا الاسم مختلف لكن هم نفس الباثوجين ستاف ايبيدرمليز هي الكواجيليز نيجاتيف فدي ار ذا سيم طب كواجيليز نيجاتيف وستاف اوريوس هل هم سيم؟ نو no. انا قلت لك ان ستاف اوريوس از ريكوجنايزد باثوجين بينما الكواجيليز نيجاتيف از كومنسر فاذا حدث هذا شخص عن طريق كرايتيريا 1 اللي هي Uh, recognize pathogen does not uh, يعني does not apply by criteria 2 does not apply ولا محتاج ان يكون في same طب acinetobacter و acinetobacter bomani the same yes بس انت لو عندك acinetobacter سواء same او not the same ما في مشكلة ليه؟ لان acinetobacter is recognized pathogen for recognized pathogen one specimen is enough you don't have to have two specimens أي أسئلة على اللي فات عشان بادئين جزء جديد اسمه MBI الله يعطيك العافية دكتور أيمن طيب إذا تحب أن ناخذ بعض الأسئلة اللي كانت most common yeah, بس okay. غالبا يعني تم تم الإجابة عنها يعني كم المدة المسموحة بين العينات في ال common commensal كان هذا واحد من الأسئلة uh, المدة المسموحة uh, هي المدة الكافية أنك تروح مكان تاني وتنظفه يعني إذا بتاخد سبيسمن من الرايت آرم right مثلا وعاوز تاخد من الليفت آرم بس تروح الليفت آرم وتنظف المكان وتاخد العينة عن اسمها سموحة يبقى فيو مينتس ار اوكي وان اور از اوكي سيم داي از اوكي نيكست داي از اوكي طيب افتر نيكست داي لا مش اوكي يعني إذا خدت الاثنين والأربع ما محسوبة لازم تبقى الاثنين والثلاث أقصى شيء تمام اذا في احد عنده سؤال الان في الاشياء اللي راحت ممكن يكتب الان طبعا حناخذ بعض الاسئله الاكثر اهميه لانه ما شاء الله العدد مره كبير فاحتمال ما نقدر نجيب على كل الاسئله بس نوعدكم ان شاء الله انه ممكن نسجلها ونجاوب عليها يعني بعدين بس ناخذ الموست الموست يعني امبورتنت وان طيب في سؤال في سؤال بيقول How a patient admitted from ER to PICU to pediatric ICU, and I will count uh, count this patient on PICU. أيوة بمعنى إنه البيشنت كان في ال ER 
احنا عندنا المشكلة هنا انه some patients بيستي في الاو ار الاي ار فترة طويلة المفروض الاي ار ديت يعني مثلا في يو اس الاي ار ديت البيشنت بيفضل اقل من 24 ساعة عندنا المشكلة انه هو ممكن يكون يقعد يومين ثلاثة او اكثر يعني يوم يومين ثلاثة طيب لو البيشنت سحب له عينة في الاي ار وطلعت بوزيتيف ويميت الكرايتيريا بتاع الكلابسي وبعد الاي ار ER عملوا له ادميشن لبيدياتريك اي سي طيب نحسب الكلابسي على الاي ار ER ولا البيدياتريك اي سي صحيح البيدياتريك اي سي ما عملوا اي خطا لكن احنا لازم نحسبها على مكان فلازم نحسبها على البيدياتريك اي سي يو اولدو ات هابن ان اي ار لانه ما نقدر نقول ان كلابسي حصلت في اوت بيشنت كلينيك طيب آه ممكن تقول ان ده ظلم للبيدياتريك اي سي يو ازاي هم يتحسب عليهم كلابسي وما لهم علاقه في الغالب ان يكون البيشنت الموجود في الاي ار اللي قعد اكثر من يوم ده بيكون تحت السيرفيس بتاعه انذر يونت يعني يخلوا ال يتابعوا ناس من البيدياتريك اي سي يو فاهمين قصدي فعشان كده بيحسبوها على النكست ده اني anyway, حتى لو ما في الوضع ده بنحسبها على النكست لوكيشن لان ما نستطيع ان نحسب الكلابسي على الاي ار او الاو ار او الاوت بيشنت كلينيك او سيم داي سيرجري او انترفيشن راديولوجي دي كلها اماكن ما هي ان بيشنت ما نستطيع ان نحسب عليها الكلابسي تمام دكتور وي كان كونتينيو دكتور فور ام بي اي اوكي الام بي اي دي اختصار لميكوزا بارير انجري بمعنى ايه بمعنى انه uh, احنا تشخص عندنا كلابسي ولكن في كرايتيريا شوية غريبة تخلينا نعتقد ان الكلابسي دي ما هي نتيجة السنترال لاين يعني يا جماعة احنا في السيرفيلانس ما بنحسب بلاد ستريم انفكشن احنا بس بنحسب البلاد ستريم انفكشن اللي سببها السنترال لاين لو سمحتوا النقطة دي مهمة جدا جدا انه ممكن عندي في, ال في اليونت يبقى عندي ثلاثة بيشنت عندهم بلاد ستريم انفكشن و اثنين منهم ما عندهم سنترال لاين وواحد عنده سنترال لاين. طب انا ك ك اي سي بي ريكورد وات؟ ريكورد فقط اللي ميتنج كلابسي كرايتيريا اللي معاه سنترال لاين و بلاد ستريم انفكشن. طيب لو واحد عنده سنترال لاين وبلاد عنده بلاد ستريم انفكشن غير من غير سنترال لاين ما ريكورد ما لنا علاقه بها. احنا ما بنعمل سيرفيلانس للبلاد ستريم انفكشن، احنا بنعمل سيرفيلانس للسنترال لاين اسوشيتد بلاد ستريم انفكشن. طيب لقينا واحد عنده بلاد ستريم انفكشن وسنترال لاين وميتنج كرايتيريا. ولكن هذا البيشنت اونكولوجي بيشنت، بيشنت عنده كانسر. او عنده ترانسبلانت ل بون مارو، بون مارو ترانسبلانت. اللي اللي عنده بون مارو ترانسبلانت ده بما انه زرع نخاع ساعات الجسم يرفض الزرع يرفض الزرع ازاي؟ يجي له دياريه ويجي له سكيني تشينجز وساعات يجي له ليفر بروبلمز فالبيشنت ده واحده من الكرايتيريا اللي عنده انه الانتستن يكون جدارها بقى فراجايل يعني الانتستن تضعف وممكن تسمح ببعض البكتيريا تتحرك من الانتستن للبلد ففي الحاله دي يحصل له بوزيتيف بلاك كالشر وما هو سبب انه السنترال لاين يعني ايوه عنده بوزيتيف بلاك كالشر وايوه عنده سنترال لاين لكن عنده مشكله اخرى انه الانتستن تبعه فيها ديزيز يسمح بالبكتيريا تنتقل من الانتستن للبلد في الطبيعي هذا ما يحدث لانه جدار الانتستن يمنع البكتيريا اللي داخل الانتستن تدخل البلد طيب الشخص اللي هو عنده المشكله ده بيبقى غالبا شخص عمل بون مارو ترانسبلانت في اللاست يير نتيجه انه كان عنده لوكيميا او 
هوجيكون ليمفوما او وات ايفر وغالبا ليكيميا واللي هو سرطان الدم وبعدين عملوا له زرع للنخاع وخلال السنه الانتستين بتاعه حصل لها انجري بقى عنده دايريه كتير الشخص ده لو حصل له كلابسي ما هنحسبها كلابسي هنحسبها ام بي اي وريبورتد سيبريتلي لانه ما هي السبب السنترال لاين وفي نفس الوقت هي ما هي حاصله في بيشنت ما عنده سنترال لاين يعني هي لو كانت سنترال لاين لو البلاد ستريم انفكشن في بيشنت ما عنده سنترال لاين اي ويل نوت ريكور طيب لو حصلت في شخص عنده المشكله بتاعه الميكوزا بارير انجري في الحاله دي ما احسبها كلابسي بس احسبها ام بي اي طيب الـ MPI تحدث في الحالات الآتية إن يكون عندك blood stream infection happen و diagnosed one of the criteria سواء كانت criteria 1, 2, 3 لكن الغريب فيها إنه الأورجانيزم intestinal organism يعني ما هو أي أورجانيزم لا الأورجانيزم معروف عنه إنه موجود في الانتستين يبقى لو في بلاد بوست بلاد كلتشر والاورجانيزم معروف عنه انه موجود في الانتستين والشخص ده خلال العام الماضي كان او حاليا كان نيوتروبينيك يعني عنده الوايت بلاد سيل كاونت قليل او عنده رفض للزرع اللي هو اسمه جريد 3 اور 4 جي اي تي جاسترو انتستينال جرافت فيرسس هوست ديزيز يعني واحد عنده ديزيز اسمه أي لو كان الديزيز ده صعب انك تعرفه الان هو عباره عن رفض ريجكشن لترانسبلانت لو الشخص ده عنده ريجكشن لترانسبلانت بنسميه جريد 3 اور 4 جاسترو انتستينال جرافت فيرسس هوست ديزيز ان الوجينيك هوموبيتيك ستيم سيل ترانسبلانت حصل خلال العام الماضي او البيشنت نيوتروبينيك في الحالتين دول مع بوزد بلاك كلتشر والاورجانيزم انتستينال ما احسبها كلابسي احسبها ام بي اي يبقى لازم الكلابسي كرايتيريا ميت او البلاد ستريم انفكشن كرايتيريا ميت 1 2 3 ااا والاورجانيزم از انتستينال اورجانيزم سواء كان ريكوجنايز ذا باثوجين او كومنسل الريكوجنايز ذا باثوجين اللي هو كل هنجيب لكم الليست دلوقتي الكومنسل اونلي تو اورجانيزم اللي هو فيري دانس ستريبت وروثيا روثيا ده نادر الحدوث يعني ممكن تشتغل في الانفكشن كنترول 10 years و you don't see روثيا but استريبت فيري دانس از اليتل كومن يعني ممكن نشوفه استريبت فيري دانس فالاورجانيزم يكون انتستينال وات داز ات مين انتستينال اورجانيزم ات از استريبت فيري دانس طيب ال 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 ريكوجنايز باثوجين هنقول لك الليست الان ليست اوف انتستينال باثوجين Eligible to be MBI. The patient has to be grade three or four gastrointestinal graft versus host disease, or is neutropenic or neutropenic, not both neutropenic. And neutropenia can happen in cancer patient, not necessarily patient who had bone marrow transplant. Well, therefore, this criteria is suitable. to cancer patient and suitable for patient to have bone marrow transplant rejection. Okay. Yep, uh, MBI is a criteria that is used. Some uh, some people asking to, to speak in English. I have been يعني, told in the لما يكون في حاجة صعبة أعرفكم بالعربي بس ما أعرف يعني. Uh, anyway, people who uh, English speaker, okay, fine. Uh, MBI is a, a category of collapse that be, can be used in cancer patients and patients who had bone marrow transplant rejection. Okay, in this case, you have to have criteria for Uh, LCBI or uh, bloodstream infection applicable, criteria 1 met or criteria 2 met or criteria 3 met. However, 
the patient is either neutropenic due to cancer or other reason, or has a rejection after um, um, bone marrow transplant, and this is uh, uh, diagnosed by diarrhea. Uh, the organism is intestinal organism, and we will give you the list of intestinal organisms. So criteria one, two, three is the same as before. So criteria one, any age, uh, culture or non-culture, uh, recognize the pathogen. Criteria two, any age, three, one year of life, two matching uh, pathogen, they are commensals. The commensal eligible to MBI is only streptoviridans or rothia. The intestinal organism, uh, is a list, and I will give it in a second, next slide. So in this case, the patient is either neutropenic, and neutropenia means absolute neutropenic count or white blood cell less than 500 cells per cubic millimeter. This means neutropenic. Usually, 95% the patient with neutropenia are um, either cancer patient or treated by can anti-cancer drugs or immunosuppressive drugs. Um, for, for this criteria, this is rejection. It's a patient who received hemobiotic stem cell transplant within the last year and has grade three or four rejection. And this is manifested by severe diarrhea. It's more, one, uh, more than one liter of diarrhea per day for adults or more than 20 ml per kg for pediatric. So he has a lot of diarrhea as a sign of injured intestine, as a sign of rejection to the home uh, bone marrow transplant. You said recognize the pathogen that is intestinal pathogen. Intestinal pathogen uh, are, they, there is no here, we don't say, if you go here, we don't say recognized, but we say intestinal pathogen instead of uh, criteria one collapse was called recognized pathogen. Here it is intestinal pathogen, uh, include bacteroids, candida, cholesteridium, enterococci, physiobacterium, vipto-streptococci, uh, provitella, venorella, velonella, and enterobacteria. And enterobacteria are big group of uh, uh, pathogen, including the most common are E. coli, Klebsiella, uh, Enterobacter, but also Citrobacter, Proteus, Providentia, Salmonella, Serratia, Chigella, Yersinia. The most common E. coli, Klebsiella, and Enterococci, but all of them can be met. In addition to bacteroids, Candida, Colostridium, Enterococci, and so on. So these are uh, intestinal organisms. And if you look here, enterococcus is a gram-positive, and enterobacter is one of the enterobacteria. And in both, it's called entero, so it's an intestinal organism. So you have intestinal organism, and you have positive blood culture in a patient who is neutropenic or um, have graft versus host disease after bone marrow transplant. Uh, so this is MBI. Um, uh, if you want to the full list of intestinal organism, it's a big list. Yani, uh, the list here is a summarized list, but this organism in front of you represent 99% of the organism. But if you, sometimes you encounter very weird organism, you can go here and see it is intestinal, okay? But when we say neutropenic, how we diagnose neutropenia? Neutropenia means patient had a low neutropenic count within the window. Um, so ne low neutropenic count means less than 500. So here, uh, say this is the positive blood culture, candida, streptoviridans, candida. Candida is criteria one MBI. Streptoviridans, criteria two MBI. 
if he's uh, adult, if he's pediatric, uh, sorry, infant, criteria three. Candida, again, criteria one. So this is the positive blood culture, three days before, three days after, and this is called the window. Within the window, you have to have uh, absolute endopenic count less than 500. Here you have two days, fine. Here you have uh, two days, fine. You have one day, fine. Even if you have within the window more than 500, fine. Here he has 600, 550. This is higher, but he still, since he has lower than 500, even one day within the window, we'll consider this neutropenic patient. This is criteria one, since it is candida. This is criteria two, since it is uh, uh, streptoviridans. And if you go back to the uh, criteria two or three, based on age, it is either streptoviridans or rothia. Um, type. Question, you don't ask this question, let me ask this question because it's very important. Now you have a patient to have candida in the blood and this is intestinal organism and he has neutropenia. So this, and his cancer patient who has neutropenia, not necessarily cancer patient, any patient with neutropenia. Uh, and he has candy, candidemia or positive blood with candida and candida is known as enteric or intestinal organism so he is uh mbi okay and on the same time he has staph aureus in the blood so should we consider him mbi criteria one or should we consider him clepsy criteria one as long as he has central line of course yeah. anyone can answer well, both. And he has candida, he has staph aureus, and he is neutropenic. Should we consider MBI or CLEPSI criteria one or both? Phoenix, alo, both. Aligaba, gher, sahih. It has to be CLEPSI. The MPI only if the organism is intestinal. But if you have intestinal and another organism, this other organism does not come from the intestine. So it came from the central line. So we will consider this as clepsy. So, so only MPI happen when the organism is intestinal and only intestinal organism does it. Only intestinal. If additional organism so I can commence it, skin commence it. I will recognize the pathogen heaven, so it's, it's clepsy. Can I have clepsy and MBI together? No. You, you should have uh, LCBI criteria met first, then the organism is intestinal, then you diagnose MBI. If you diagnose MBI, it's not clepsy. If you diagnose clepsy, it's not MBI. So they are mutually exclusive. You cannot diagnose both. Either one only. Look at this patient. Uh, he had uh, he had a white blood cell four hundred, so has neutropenia. Had uh, enterococcus fecalis, uh, which is intestinal pathogen. Uh, had uh, white blood cell 300, which is neutropenia. So he has neutropenia and uh, positive blood culture with intestinal organism. So he's what? He's MBI. So this is MBI. And the date of diagnosis is the date of positive blood culture. Neutropenia is not a symptom. A symptom of LCBI, uh, either for adults, uh, fever, Shells hypotension. There is no um, uh, neutropenia as one of the symptoms. Neutropenia is a condition, not a symptom. So we diagnose this on the day seven 
So this is MBI, date of, day, date of uh, event is day seven. Later on, the patient had erythema, which is red skin, skin culture, staph aureus, black culture, staph aureus type. Uh, staph aureus here, should we consider it MBI or calapsy? There is no uh, neutropenia within the window because window is the positive blood culture three days before, three days after. So no neutropenia, I cannot consider or host, uh, host versus uh, graft versus host disease rejection after uh, hemobiotic stem cell transplant. So this is clapsy. However, the same organism has been detected before in another infection. And we said primary clapsy diagnosis criteria one and two, three. We had a sentence at the end of the definition. And this was the blood culture is not related to infection at another place. Here, the staph aureus is the same organism detected from a skin infection before within a uh, few, uh, within 14 days. So in this case, 14 days of the infection. So in this case, this is not primary uh, staph, uh, not primary clapsy. We'll consider it secondary BSI. So secondary BSI, primary infection at another place, MBI. So uh, uh, this is uh, the diagnosis. So the patient could have MBI, later have uh, clapsy or uh, secondary bloodstream infection according if there is previous infection with the same organism or no. Uh, so the same patient can have clapsy and MBI, but different duration, okay? Um, when we say graft versus host disease, we have grade one, two, three, four, one skin involvement, two liver involvement, three, in addition, there is diarrhea, which means intestinal involvement, uh, four, severe diarrhea, and sometimes the intestine has something called pain or illness. Illness or illness is paralysis of the intestine. So grade three or four has intestinal involvement. That's why we consider rejection only when there is intestinal involvement that make injury of the intestinal wall and allow boring of the organism from intestine to the blood. Some clapsy notes. Uh, this, these are fungal community pathogen that are not allowed for the diagnosis of clapsy. So if you see both blood culture with one of these organism, it's not clapsy because it is community fungal pathogen and cannot be considered healthcare associated. Uh, why you can ask me why you should consider this community that my patient was in the hospital for two weeks because this organism has long incubation period and what happened usually they are uh, captured from the community appear only in the hospital so we do not consider them blastomyosis histoplasma uh, uh, coxico iodides paracoxico iodides cryptococcus and pneumocystis these are rare pathogen I and mean, you may work in infection control for 10 years you may not see them so they are a pathogen. We shouldn't consider this clapsy. There is also no clapsy for infection that is latent infection, like syphilis, tuberculosis, herpes, shingles. These are not clapsy, of course. The following intestinal organism, exclusion of the following intestinal organism as the sole pathogen for primary clapsy. If you have this as only organism, only organism for post blood culture, I cannot consider this as clapsy, uh, including Campylobacter, C. difficile, enteropathogenic E. coli. This is different from the E. coli. E. coli is organism that can be, uh, bo bo uh, uh, clapsy can be caused by E. coli, but enteropathogenic E. coli is another organism. Salmonella, Shigella, Listeria, Yersina. Remember that uh, almost all of them 
uh, can be MBI, but cannot be clepsy. Can be secondary bloodstream infection, but cannot be clepsy. Exception also only in babies, newly born babies, who have both blood culture for group B streptococci in the first six days of life. If a baby recently born in neonatal ICU usually or neonatal wards, and the patient have both the blood culture and the organism is a stripped B group. Uh, in this case, I cannot consider this clepsy, even if the baby has central line, because group B streptococci usually are captured from the birth canal. Yani the patient, the baby, give the organism during birth from uh, the birth canal. So if it happens that he has both blood culture, we cannot consider this clepsy because it is captured during birth. Uh, meeting all LCB criteria in all the situation will not be considered clepsy. So I'm giving you now exceptions. These are patients who meet the criteria of clepsy, but I'm not going to fill a form. I will exclude it. I will delete it. So these are clepsy meeting the definition, but I'm not going to record it. Why? Because the patient have extracorporeal life support, ECMO, or uh, uh, ECLS, extracorporeal uh, membrane oxygenation or life support, or Ventricular assisted device, these are all devices that are used in patient, uh, uh, severely ill patient. It come in contact with the blood. And um, these patients are on these devices, <clears throat> uh, these devices, and he has clepsy. If he has clepsy and he has ECMO, for more than two days and is still in place during the date of event, in this case, we'll not consider this clepsy because he has another uh, foreign body that can cause the infection, not necessarily the central line. In ECMO, they take the blood outside the body, filter it and return it back to the body. So the blood can be contaminated during this situation. So if he has clepsy meeting the criteria, of LCBI, I won't consider if he is on one of these devices for more than two days and he's still on this device during the date of LCBI criteria met. Another scenario, patient who has injection. Some patients are abusers of drug, so they're taking drug. So the patient is awake and he is injecting himself for drug. And this was documented in the patient record. So documentation of observed or suspected patient injection in the vascular axis within the BSI at, uh, window. Yani, little patient fi el central line. The patient is playing with the central line, either opening the cab, injecting drugs, or doing any maneuver with the central line. In this case, we will not consider clepsy because he is uh, manipulating the central line. Um, uh, meeting LCB criteria in all situation blue is not considered. Another two examples, the patient has suspected or known rare disease called uh, factitious disorder imposed on another FDIA called, uh, th this is a syndrome. Uh, it happens usually um, it is a condition in which a caregiver uh, creates the appearance of a healthy program and another person, typically their child. So here they um, disorder uh, or syndrome by proxy uh, where they uh, suspect uh, infection in their patient, in their child, usually the mother. 
uh, here uh, the the child has a, a very rare disease called uh, epidermolysis bullosa. Again, this criteria, I, I uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you about this because it's very rare. You will not see it. But what you can see is the first one, where ECMO happened during the date of event. And in this case, you delete the clepsy. If the patient is drug abuser, you shouldn't use, and this is documented that he's manipulating the line. You shouldn't count this. If uh, this syndrome is present or this rare a genetic pediatric disease is diagnosed epidermal, epidermolysis below they have a skin problem the skin is fragile and allow the bacteria to enter the blood so in this case even if they have a positive blood culture we will not consider it because either it is uh, factitious or it's a skin rare problem so we don't count it the last one if you have at the vascular axis, the site of central line insertion, you have infection and bus is uh, is given, a bus is, uh, is uh, tested, and it gives the same organism as the blood. And you have uh, staph aureus fi el, el bus at the axis site, and you have a staph aureus in the blood. In this case, we will not consider clepsy even uh, it is meeting the criteria because it is probably uh, from the local infection at the site of insertion. Another reporting instruction, um, we only care about primary clepsy. Uh, if you get additional organism, you count it on the first clepsy. Yani, uh, first, post blood culture was clepsiella. The second, post blood culture with acinetobacter. Don't count another Clepsy within 14 days, but you can use both both Clepsilla uh, uh, and Acinetobacter in the report of the first Clepsy. Uh, there is no secondary BSI after primary BSI, of course. Uh, thank you. I'm done with the Clepsy. I'm open for any uh, question.